DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci Resolve. Premiere Pro versus DaVinci Resolve. In a world dominated by video editing software, many have battled to become the best. Some of them are just too plain and simple, while others claim to hold power and yet end up freezing and crashing after every operation. But as these programs enter and exit this ferocious game, one of them sits on the Iron Throne as the undisputed king of video editing software. DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is so stable. It's so it good. It is so smooth and it uses all of my GPU. You got Fairlight for audio, you have Fusion for compositing, and it's all very capable. DaVinci over the years has been continuously making major improvements in all areas of the program. Despite Premiere being the golden standard of video editing software, many people online are now moving away from it. Adobe Premiere costs $600 a year while DaVinci is free, along with the fact that it has better tools, smoother playback, and more efficient rendering. And you won't have to worry about getting hit by a hefty cancellation fee like Adobe. And it won't force you to give up your privacy and snoop on your photos or in progress work like a sneaky thief. Adobe actually just announced that they are stealing your work and using it for a profit. They're spying on your computer every time you open up Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, whatever app that you use. But to understand the rise of DaVinci Resolve, we have to go into the future where it all began by a guy named Edward Muybridge. One of the strangest and most significant figures in the history of photography. They knew the pictures, but they didn't know his name. Artist, showman, and murderer. This man with no name. Famous for his The Horse in the Motion series, Edward Muybridge took hundreds of still shots in motion and laid the foundation of chronophotography and went on to invent Juprascope, a device that projected the series of still images rapidly in a sequence, creating an early version of what it looked like a modern day Jeff video. Fast forward to the late 1890s when film cameras came along, that's when long strips of photographic negatives aka flim stock started being used. When you play this script quickly through a projector, it created the illusion of movement. Using such sequential movement instead of static images gained even more traction when Russian filmmaker Lev Kolosov introduced his theory. He experimented with how viewers derived more meaning from the interplay between two sequential shots than from a single one. This highlighted the usefulness and effectiveness of film editing and cemented Kolosov's place as one of the first video editors ever. Later, filmmakers discovered they could shoot scenes at different times and locations and then stitch them together instead of filming an entire movie on a strict timeline. Then came videotape technology, which introduced machines that could pause, play, and record, replacing the hand-on job of involving physical cutting and joining of strip limbs. This cut and join process was definitely laborious, but I bet it didn't crash like Premiere Pro does today. However, it wasn't until 1989 that video editing truly went digital and non-linear, with the launch of Avid Media Composer. And so, in 1987, I set out to build a company that would deliver that new way of editing. We've done it. It's called the Avid One Media Composer. Nonlinear editing is a method of editing videos that allow you to access any part of the footage at any time without having to follow a strict sequential order. While Avid One might seem basic compared to today's high resolution and fluid software, it laid the groundwork for advanced editing tools we use today. Avid was definitely the first, but revolutionary? Not really. Although Avid One offered real-time editing that allowed previewing with layers of video and audio, it was aimed at high-end professionals with substantial budget only, and was tied to specialized hardware and platforms, which means it wasn't really general purpose at all. The real game changer arrived two years later in 1991 when Adobe launched Premiere. Alongside with digital cameras, gaming consoles, and the World Wide Web, Premiere was one of the iconic innovations of the early 90s. Initially released for the Macintosh platform, Premiere made its debut with a timeline-based non-linear editing interface that let users drag and drop video clips and layer audio files, which was a groundbreaking editing approach for its time. But Adobe didn't stop there though. Starting with the version 2, Premiere added chroma key tools and time effects. By by 1996, Premiere 4 was the first version to offer full screen broadcast quality at 30 frames per second and the version 4.2 on the Windows could even handle focus sizes. In 1998, Premiere introduced RAM previews followed by Audio Mixer in 2001. Then in 2003, the whole application was relaunched as Adobe Premiere Pro. It got integrated to Adobe Creative Cloud Suite on a subscription basis to enhance artistic collaboration, which became an industry standard among majority of the creatives worldwide. But after decades of monopoly, endless bugs and bad customer service, it was a high time for something bigger better to revolutionize the video editing world and finally in 2015 creative community witnessed the rise of a new app that quickly became a favorite as it rose above all the video editing software shaking up the industry if you have watched this video to this point pretty sure you are enjoying it so make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you want high quality editing and thumbnails done check out the link in the description
Though in this video, I mostly talk about DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere Pro, there is a software that deserves a mention, Final Cut Pro. I used to use Final Cut Pro when I was starting with editing and it has always been smooth to work with. If it weren't for complex motion graphics that I do with DaVinci Resolve, I certainly would be using Final Cut Pro. Now let's move on to why DaVinci is so much superior than Premiere Pro. Video editing can cover a lot of ground, from trimming audio to graphics and coloring. In front of a whole zoo of Adobe's Creative Cloud application with specific purpose for each app, DaVinci may seem to lack. But this lone wolf doesn't need a pack because it's an entire ecosystem on its own. DaVinci Resolve bundles tools for all of these tasks into a single program. With Resolve, you can get to the cut page for quick edits, the edit page for detailed work, the fusion piece for advanced graphics, and the fair light for audio, all accessible with a single click. On the flip side, while Premiere Pro is a solid video editor, you'll need After Effects for advanced graphics and Audition for in-depth audio editing, both of which are completely separate from Premiere Pro. Although Adobe has created a feature called Dynamic Link, which is supposed to enable you to edit your video clips or audio in other applications while keeping them open in Premiere Pro with real-time updates on your timeline, it is mostly limited to theory only. In practice, Dynamic Link is buggy most of the time, especially with effects and transition, leading many users to prefer rendering clips and sending them to respective programs rather than relying on dynamic link. I'll put it this way. It's definitely not a 100% success rate every time you open up something with dynamic link. And it's enough that I usually tend to avoid it and I will render out a clip and then send it to After Effects, for example, without using Dynamic Link at all. DaVinci Resolve with the Fusion and Fairlight pages is essentially like having After Effects and Audition built into the same program, making it more robust and less prone to bugs. This one-stop shop approach simplifies your workflow, avoiding the need to jump between different programs like you often do with Adobe Suit. In addition to that, there is also a color grading tab, which I'll talk about later. There is simply no unnecessary dependency between apps when you can have all that you need in one place. Another of the prime reasons that editors are switching to DaVinci Resolve is because it is fairly reliable to work on. I actually paid for DaVinci Resolve. This is DaVinci Resolve Studio. It is a great piece of software that I, uh, that I use because it uh, actually Totally worth the 300 bucks to have a video editor that never crashes in Linux. After major redesign and upgrade from Blackmagic, DaVinci Resolve has become incredibly stable. Even though I edit with a lot of complex effects and third-party plugins, layers on layers, it rarely crashes. Unlike the traditional code stacking approach, it underwent a complete rewrite from the scratch, preventing lags and bugs. Thanks to this, it offers high optimized performance, smooth playback and efficient render and uses all of your GPU. In contrast, software like Premiere Pro cannot be trusted with its frequent freezes, crashes, which have caused many editors like my friends, not me, I don't use Adobe, to lose hours and hours of work even with auto saved enabled. Especially if you are someone who works with tight deadlines and has projects to deliver on time, using Premiere can feel like walking through a minefield. One single bug and all of your hard work could explode in a blink. Not only this, when it comes to color grading, no video editing software can even come close to DaVinci. Color grading is very important when it comes to video editing. While factors like rendering and playback are editors concern only, color in a video affect everyone, including the viewer's experience. Basically, it can turn bland footage into a visually stunning masterpiece and make everything look polished. And DaVinci Resolve was created for this very thing. Originally developed by DaVinci Systems as a high end color grading correction tool, it was used primarily in film, television, post production. Today, it includes powerful color grading tools that blow away anything that Premiere Pro or any other editing software has to offer. With DaVinci Resolve, you get SDR coloring, Dolby SDR 10 Plus power windows, trackers, advanced noise removals, far surpassing what other editing softwares have. Sure, Premiere is decent, but it's no match to a professional curl list like DaVinci. Not only that, DaVinci Resolve workflow uses Nod, which makes it possible to apply different colors and effects on a node by node basis. By doing that, you're not slapping everything into a master clip, making it much easier easier to add, remove, adjust and experiment with their videos. And the fact that DaVinci allows you to use most of the tools for free is amazing as when choosing a software, one of the first things editors consider is price. This is especially true for hobbyists who can't justify spending a lot of money on something they don't use daily. High cost subscriptions can really start to burn your hole in your pocket when charges of applications like Adobe Premiere Pro and Avid Media Composer quickly add up. DaVinci Resolve, however, offers a powerful free version that covers most of your needs. Everything you could ask for all in one package and at no cost. 
If you find yourself wanting more advanced features, the studio version is available at a one-time purchase fee for just $299, practically half of what Adobe charges yearly. You also get a perpetual license for two users. In terms of value, Resolve provides a much better deal than any other editing software out there. Cherry on top, Resolve also has a dedicated editing keyboard designed for its high-speed precision with DaVinci Resolve. It comes in three slick keyboard models for different editing needs. The speed editor for quick edits, the replay editor for faster place multi-camera work like news and sports, and there is the editor keyboard, a fully sized QWERT keyboard with a clutched search dial and extra edit keys. And the best part is its price at $595 comes with DaVinci Resolve and is way cheaper than Adobe's annual subscription cost. Not only that, DaVinci also offers high-end color panels featuring control surfaces with intuitive tactile controls for making precise adjustments quickly. And they also have editing audio tools too. And with all of these features and many hardwares compatible with DaVinci Resolve, DaVinci has now taken the crown for the best video editing software.